Hey guys, this is Mr. Maloney, and I am here to share our first lesson from our new reading unit, and we're going to be reading and learning about how to become better readers of historical fiction. Now, some of you might be confused because you're thinking, I still haven't taken my post-test on Unit 3, where we dealt with some nonfiction and specifically the American Revolution. If you haven't tested yet, you will test soon. But we're going to put that on hold for now. And we're going to get started with our first lesson from our Unit 4. And once again, we're going to be uh, reading lots of historical fiction and coming up with ways to be more strategic readers and really trying to think like the author. Why did the author do the things that he or she did? So our first lesson today has this learning target. Readers pay attention to the mood and atmosphere of the places in which stories are set. So you're going to hear me say those terms a lot. Mood and then also the word tone. And authors do things on purpose to get the reader to feel a certain way, probably the same way that the characters feel in a book. And here are some things we'll be looking at. What clues is the author giving me that suggests what kind of place this is? And which details suggest that there might be a change or there might be some sort of trouble. It's almost like being a reading detective. Usually authors give clues in fictional stories near the beginning that end up being really important later on. So as reading detectives, we try to pay attention to what those might be. And what does this place look and feel like? And that really fits in with the mood and the tone. So I have a book I'd like to share with you a part of a book. It's called Rose Blanche, and we have included the link to have this entire picture book read to you. Rose Blanche is a story written by Roberto Innocenti, I believe, and it's a book we'll be referring to throughout a lot of our lessons. And I do want to draw your attention to a couple of pages near the beginning, and as I read them, I want you to think about the mood. How does this make you feel? What's the author trying to do? So let's see if I can get this near the camera here and if I can read this to you. It says, now the trucks follow each other under the school windows. They are full of soldiers we don't know, but they wink at us. They drive tanks that make sparks on the cobblestones. They are so noisy and smell like diesel oil. They hurt my ears and I have to hold my nose when they pass by. Now as a reader, I'm gonna take that in and have a little bit of a conversation with myself. How does that make me feel? What is the author trying to get across to me? What is the mood and the tone? And right away, it seems very strange to me that there are soldiers and tanks right by a school. That seems very, very unexpected. And the author also included, it was noisy. It smelled like diesel oil. So I really feel like the author's trying to build a mood or a, a tone that is a little bit perhaps frightening or scaring for those students because I don't think normally there'd be soldiers and tanks near a school. Uh, he mentions what it smells like and what it sounds like. And I feel like the mood is one that is kind of serious and potentially, as the book goes on, could become much, much more serious as well. So, as I think about the mood, these are some words that I might refer to. 
Now, we might not know every single word here, and that's just fine. But you might want to try to pick one of these to see how it fits with the story. Um, surprised? I was a little surprised by the tanks and the soldiers. I think the word stress fits for me. It seemed like it would have to be a stressful time for those students. So what I have done, fourth graders, is I have written a sample response that I want to share with you. So here's the question. What are the clues I found that helped me discover the mood and tone of the story? And here's what I wrote. At the beginning of Rose Blanche, I noticed there were soldiers and tanks near the school. There was also the smell of diesel, and it was very noisy. So I'm telling some of the clues that I saw. And then I wrote, this made me think the mood is stressful and unhappy for Rose and her schoolmates. It makes me realize this is a serious story. So I wrote some clues, and then I wrote how that affected me. What is the author trying to do as a writer? What your job, fourth graders, is going to be is to take this same prompt, what are the clues I found that helped me discover the mood and tone of the story? And I would like you to apply that to your first two chapters in I Survived. Now you probably have a different book than this, but your task for tomorrow is to read chapters one and two in your I Survived book and on your Google Doc, please answer this question in a complete paragraph, just like the sample that I wrote for you. Do you have any questions? Okay, now we're not quite done fourth graders. We also have included a news ELA link that we would like you to read and answer. And it's all about St. Patrick's Day and a venomous snake bite. So we thought that one was topical because yesterday was St. Patrick's Day. So we hope you enjoy this. There are four questions to answer at the end and also a written response. And then you have your reading log, which looks like this. Which looks like this. And just like uh, usual, you'll do your 20 minutes of kind of choose your own independent reading. And if you could please log that on this sheet. Um, your reading log from your teacher might look a little bit different, but everybody in fourth grade has a way to track their reading. So fourth graders, once again, let's really think about mood. Use Rose Blanche as a sample, and then write your response using your I Survive book on your Google Doc. And then check out the News ELA article and also do your independent reading. So I hope you guys enjoy it. I enjoy being your teacher today and have fun. Bye-bye.